Okay, <clears throat> so I had another weird dream. So basically, I'm in this city, this bustling and bustling city, and I don't know if I'm, I don't want to say character, but I think I was looking at at it from the outside, from the outside looking in, like I wasn't a part of the activity that was going on, like nobody knew that I was aware, kind of like I was a ghost, or invisible, rather, so I'm in this building, and it's um, a pretty big building, and basically what it is, it's like a research center where people go and do research and they pay those people money to to do research on them um, so basically there's like these pods or these rooms because the study that they're doing is like weeks or months and so the people sign up they pay those people X amount of dollars for their time and the catch is that these people have to live there and they do run tests every so often on these people but um, these people you know they have little rooms or little apartments like um, how can I explain it like there's a bed in there there's a little kitchenette in there and they have their own little bathroom and it's like a hallway full of these like white sterile rooms and that's where they stay day in and day out they don't have any contact with the outside world no phones they do have like balconies all of them have balconies because this building is situated like in a not a skyscraper but it's like a pretty high building it's a self-standing building but it's really high like 20, 30 stories above ground, above the city. So they all have balconies that they can go out into, but the balconies are enclosed in like thick windows that don't open. And if they do open, it's just like a crack just to let some of the air in and so that people are able to hear like the outside world hustle and bustle, like traffic and stuff like that. <coughs> Excuse me. So... Anyhow, one of the girls that is staying there, her boyfriend, somehow, some way, I'm looking at it from like an outside person looking in. Her boyfriend found a way to get climb up there somehow and like sneak in her room. And so all the doors are locked at a certain time and then they are unlocked in the morning. So they basically have like a, some privacy in their rooms. And so one of the guy, one of the girl's boyfriends found out where, which room she was in. And he somehow, some way finagled a way as to how to get in her room. And so there's that. And I just remember like seeing him climbing up and like them, them spending time or whatever. And then him leaving in the morning before, uh, the lab people well I say lab people because they're all dressed in white they all have lab coats on they all have like um, clipboards and pins like laboratory type stereotypical type people anyway um, I'm getting tired of it, so, chance. so then um, but what's really going on is that they're being brainwashed and they're doing these illegal type testing on them and like dangerous testing on them but in order for those people to like accept doing these things they have to be brainwashed and the way that they brainwash them is they all have to go into this room one by one um, one of the lab technicians or whatever takes that person to this room they lock the door and then they turn on like uh, air vent and in the air vent comes in like this special gas that you can't smell 
but it's making them be more submissive I guess is the best word I can think of so they're more to say yes or to not complain or like it makes them like kind of dumb <laughs> to where it's like oh okay yeah sure I'll I'll eat that or okay yeah sure you could test on my brain and oh yeah sure no problem um you could break a bone and see how well I heal like it that air that they're breathing in that room makes them to where they're submissive and then they're dumb and they're like unaware so one of the ladies that works there she's starting to figure out that where she works is like unkind and inhumane and she doesn't like what she sees but she just doesn't want to quit and she just doesn't want to leave because she's afraid that if the people that own this business finds out that she knows too much or has feelings about about it in a negative way that they'll just like dispose of her so in order for her to like help the people that are in the research she tries to tell them like just just please listen to me don't say a word or you know they'll kill her or something um and so whenever she's in charge of taking the patients or the people one by one into this room and so what she does is she tells them for some reason she tells them to count um to take off their shoe and to count like how many holes there are on the shoelaces on one side so she counts the girl do you remember she's like blonde hair blue eye patient she counts and she's like one two three four five six seven eight so the laboratory person goes okay so there's eight shoelace holes on the side of your shoe whenever you see me nod to you through the wind because this room is full of it's all glass so you could they're on the other side of the glass and they could see them so she goes in the room she she the laboratory person puts a straw like this big straw into the keyhole and she tells the girl, when I close the door and lock it, I want you to breathe through the keyhole so that she's getting like regular air. And so do not breathe through your nose. And when I motion to you, and that girl, the patient is still holding onto her shoe. She says, when I motion to you, I want you to count how many holes there are and um, motion to me like the number, like hold up like eight fingers. So the girl's like, okay. So then they put the patient into that room. <laughs> the lab person closes the door, locks it. She flips the switch. And this gas starts filling up the room and it's invisible and you can't see it. You can't smell it. There's no scent to it. And so the girl that's inside, the patient, she puts her mouth on the straw and she starts breathing through the straw and the straw is through the keyhole. And the reason for that is so that she breathes regular air from the hallway instead of breathing in the air that's in the room. And every patient has to do that for like, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. And that's what keeps them submissive. But the laboratory person wants all the patients to start being aware and not being dumb and not being submissive so they can like formulate their opinion about the place being that it's bad and that they're making them do bad things and every time they have to do something bad they have to sign that they're fine with doing that test so anyhow so she flips the switch and the room starts filling up with this gas and that girl's breathing through the straw that's connected to the keyhole so she could breathe regular air and then like after five minutes the laboratory technician looks at her watch and she mouths to her how many keyholes and so she's holding the shoe, still breathing through the straw, as she counts it, and then she puts up eight fingers. And so the laboratory technician's like, okay, good. So like five minutes passes by, and then she motions to her again to count how many holes are in the keyhole. I mean, how many holes are in the shoe? Like how many shoelace holes there are? And so she's counting it, and she's getting confused, and she puts up like six fingers. <clears throat> so the technician knows like oh my goodness like that air is, that gas is getting to her because she can't even concentrate so then she's like 
breathe through the straw, not through your nose, right? And so the girl's like, okay, okay, you know, nodding. So she's just breathing, 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 because the door will not unlock until after the time is up, like 15 minutes. So finally the door unlocks and she opens the door and she brings a girl out and closes the door. And the girl's like, <sighs> like trying to breathe because it's hard to breathe for 15 minutes through a straw. Like you feel like you're not getting enough oxygen in your brain. Anyway, so then they close the door and then she's like, oh my God, I feel so much smarter. Like every time I come out of here, I feel so like lazy and weak and I just want to take a nap and I just want to take it easy. I don't have any energy. She goes, I for once have come out of this room feeling like I have energy and I'm well aware of my surroundings and the technician is like please be very careful we need to I need to figure out a plan on how to get everybody out of here because what they're doing is inhumane and they're testing on you guys and giving you chemicals that can do like long-term damage to your brains and then I woke up <laughs> so I don't know where the heck I got this dream like I don't know why I dreamt it. I don't know how my brain... I mean, it was like a movie. Like, I was watching a movie in my brain, in my sleep. It's like all these pods that are rooms, all these people that are in this research that have signed up and agreed to this research and have gotten paid for it, <coughs> they're being brainwashed. The laboratory person, one of them is like, figuring out how it's not right but she's afraid to speak up because she feels that these people are very powerful and that they can kill her off so in order to help she's helping them to where they don't have to be submissive and they don't sign and somehow some way they're gonna figure out how to escape but I woke up <laughs> so I don't know how it ends but isn't that strange? Like my brain thought of that. <laughs> like a straw in the keyhole to breathe air from the hallway instead of breathing air from the room. Like oh, it's crazy. Anyhow, that was my dream. Just thought I'd share it. And um, if you like the video, if you like me, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, <laughs> click the notification bell. Um, and yeah, we'll see what happens next. Okay, bye.